are back. It is a joy and a privilege to have one of our senior mothers to be a part of this time of Coffee with Curry. Such a serious, strong woman who just celebrated her 92nd birthday. We sang happy birthday to her on Sunday and, 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 and I told them to watch out because she was driving her own car <laughs> and she's still living in her own home and still doing very well. Every Black History Month, she's the one who leads the effort for us to be able to have an awesome Black History Month celebration here at East Iron Fair. So Mother Woodland, thank you for coming. Thank you. Well, and I just... Me. And I want to also share with, with all of you that she's representing the ladies, the gentlemen, the people from the 30s, the 20s, the 30s, and the 40s. And she will certainly be able to give us whatever information she wants to give us. Mother Woodland, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I just thank God for every, I was getting ready to say every day, but for every moment yeah. of my life. And he's the one that has brought me this far. Yes. Nobody but God. Yes. And I'm dependent on him, and I'm just trusting in him to keep on keeping me, and I know he will. Yes. Because whatever you ask of him, he will do it. Yes. He never fails. Yes. Never fails. And I came up uh, the old time way. Okay. And back in the day there were well the things that are being done now the it's so different and i don't expect uh, a lot of um, things that are going on now and i don't expect them to go, uh, go back mm -hmm. to the old time way mm -hmm. but with some of the things that are going on now we need to go back mm -hmm. to the old time way i was brought up in a very very religious home and my parents did not object to making us do the right thing. And they didn't have to keep telling you over and over, over and over. They only told you one time. Mm. And there were so many times that they didn't even have to open their mouth. They just give you that look. <laughs> yes. And it wasn't a whole lot of looks. It was one look. Mm -hmm. And there is a song that just says, only one look, only a look. And I think about back then when we got just that one look mm -hmm. and you knew what that one look was all about. Right. And there were times when my sister and I, we would get behind the house mm -hmm. and we would start talking. We didn't let them see us, but we had a little wish. I was so glad when I get 18, I'm leaving here. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't take the way that we were mean at that time we didn't know any better but the day I became 18 I didn't have a job I had the baby mm -hmm. and I said to myself what on earth was I thinking wanting to be 18 so much I don't have any place to go I don't have a job so what is going on and all of a sudden I changed that okay. story and from that day on, I learned from that experience. My mom didn't put me out. She helped me with the baby. She helped me in so many different ways, not only my mom, but my dad, in so many different ways. Not only me, but my sister at that time. Uh, her baby and my baby were born two weeks apart. We both were both still at home, but they took care of us. And it was just so many different things that they did for us. And I remember one day my mom said to me, there was something I did, and she talked to me. Then all of a sudden she said, well, you go get a switch. Mm. I went to the tree, and I think it took me about five minutes, maybe 10 minutes to get back to her. I was looking all over that tree trying to find the smallest switch on the tree. And when I found it, I took it back to her. She said, I said a switch. Go get me a switch. I said, that's what, she said, go get me a switch. I said, oh my gosh, you're gonna kill me. <laughs> so I went back and got the switch and she did what she had to do, but it was for my own good. Yeah. And it was just so many things that I learned from 
being brought up the right way. The right way. And we didn't wait until Sunday to serve the Lord. We served Him each and every day. Mm -hmm. We had church right in our home. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, had special, special prayer on Sunday morning before we went to the breakfast table. And then we left there and we went to church. And there were times when we were in church all day long, mm -hmm. all day long. Mm -hmm. We didn't go back home. We stayed in church. And I remember my sister saying, I didn't say it, my sister said it. When I leave here and go get on my own, I'm, not, I'm never going to church. Mm -hmm. There's just too much in going to church. That's what she said. Right. But when she got married and had her own uh, home and everything, I remember hearing her husband say, she was the first one out the door. Yeah. The lady that said she was never going to church. Mm -hmm. And she would holler back and ask them, what's taking you so long? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she got um, a teaching from them making us go to church. That's right. She got a teaching. And in the generation that we're in today, you, you, they don't want to make the children do anything. Oh, no. They don't make them do anything. And speaking of your sister, who was a very, very dear mm -hmm. mother for me uh, during my time when I was in Dover, I even have her picture still oh, my in my God. office. Uh, and, and I just love her. She, she, she was just the greatest. Yeah. So as soon as yeah. you start speaking of her, I said, oh, wow, I can remember her so well. Mm -hmm. And she was raised very well. Yes, can, yes. Can you remember? Um, during the 60s or 70s when they were having all of the protests for voting. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, it wasn't a very, it wasn't a very nice experience that we had to go to. Mm -hmm. uh, women were not allowed to vote, of course. Right. And it was just a lot of, a lot of uh, hate mm -hmm. during that time. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to say that all white people were bad. Mm -hmm. We had some good white people. Yes. There were some white people, I might as well tell the truth, there were some white, and I think it's like that today, there were some white people that I really would have rather to been with than to be with some of us. Yes, that's correct. And I'm quite sure they felt the same way. There were some of us then that they would rather be with than be, to be with some of their color. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's the way it was back in the day. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was just something, I, I, I just can't explain yeah. some of the things that we had to go through right. to get along with them. And I do remember there was one time, um, in fact, that's since I've been here in Delaware, um, I was uh, catching Dart bus, and when I got on the bus, there were just a few seats left. And when I went to, to walk down the aisle, uh, this white boy was in the seat. He had his books in his lap, and when he saw me, he took his books and laid them on the seat. Mm. That meant he didn't want me to sit beside him. So I just kept on walking. Mm. And a man saw that, a black man saw that. He got up, he said, ma'am, come back, come back. He said, you don't have to go any further, you're gonna sit here. So he asked him, why did you put your books there? Mm -hmm. And he, the guy turned his head and looked out the window like he didn't hear him. He said, I'm talking to you, why did you put your books there? He said, why do you think I put them there? I don't want her sitting beside me. Mm. He said, well, she's gonna sit there. So he, uh, the man took the books and gave them back to him. And when the man gave them back to him, he got removed. Mm. And all the other seats uh, in the back were taken. So he stood up. Rather than to sit beside me, he stood. Wow. And, oh, during the time, um, there was a movie down in Chestertown, a movie theater. and. We were not allowed to sit up high. They had those seats for the white people. And we had to sit way down low mm -hmm. in the back, like it was kind of dark, like. Mm -hmm. But then all of my sister and I, all of a sudden we felt something hit us in the back of our head. And we looked around. And the person that did it did like that. 
they had, had a spitball that they threw down on us. Oh, wow. And hit us in the back of the head. So we didn't say anything. And then all of a sudden, here come another one. So my sister said, we better go. I said, well, we paid to come in here, so we're going to stay. So that's what we had to put up with. Wow. Them throwing spitballs down on us. Mm -hmm. And then there was um, another incident. Uh, there was a place called Gill Brothers. They made their own ice cream. Mm -hmm. And they had a, a space on the outside, a little opening where we were not allowed to go inside. They had seats and tables set up, those for the, for, for the white people. But the black people couldn't go in. If you wanted ice cream, you had to stand there and reach through this little hole and give them their money, and then they would hand the ice cream out to you. Oh. But the ice cream was so good, <laughs> and it only cost 10 cents a cone. Oh. And it was so much, and so we put up with having to stand outside to get that good ice cream for only 10 cents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you this, Mother, and I, thank you, because what you're doing is you're helping me to understand how far we've come. Yes, yes. We, we, we've, I mean, I can't even imagine these millennials allowing what you went through mm -hmm. to even happen. It would be a riot. But y'all understood patience. Y'all understood tolerance. Yeah. And, 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 and when, when you were first able to vote, Tell me, did you vote? Did I vote this time? No, no, no. When you were first able, do you remember when you was first able to vote? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I really didn't. No. Okay. I might as well tell the truth. I didn't. Okay. Um, I just had to think about, really, I didn't even know uh, the real meaning of, of, of having to vote. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I'm not going to do it just because somebody else is doing it. I'm going to wait until I know the real, real meaning of vote, mm. voting. But then, all of a sudden, uh, it came to me, uh, what we were going to, voting is a real, real thing to do. Yes. So, it, it didn't happen overnight. Right, right. But then all of a sudden, I did uh, go and vote. Okay. And when I voted, I thought back, um, why didn't I do this at first? But I didn't know I what it was all about. Right. And like I said, I, I'm not going to do it because somebody else is doing it. Right. Yeah. So, and, and mother, um, did you vote for uh, President Obama? Did I? Y yes. <laughs> you did, yes. You, you, you never. And 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 did you feel that your vote mattered in making history? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I did. Yes. And and do you feel that? When we don't vote, it creates a circumstance of what we're dealing with right now? I do think, yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. Have you voted yet? Oh, yes. Oh, you voted already? Oh, yes. All right. All right. You're doing better than your pastor because I haven't voted yet, but I'm going to do it. But I, I, I have a little tradition that I do mm -hmm. with my family. Um, my wife, I, the dog, and Ashley, uh -huh. we all go to the polls together. Our okay. dog is a, is a service dog, so we make sure that we all go. My wife takes the dog in with her. I mm -hmm. take Ashley in with me. Okay. Because what I'm teaching Ashley now is that your vote really matters. Right, right. And I ask her, who are we going to vote for? We talk about it before we even go to the polls. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that she keeps saying, we have to vote, Daddy. We have to vote. Yes. Some states have early voting where you can go and vote early. Mm -hmm. And others have the mail-in. And I think that's how you voted. That's Am I correct? Yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here at Delaware, we, we have to either mail-in or we have to wait to election right. day. Mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and I, and I Told, I told Ashley, I said, we cannot do like some states and and, and go and vote early, mm -hmm. but we're going to vote on a date that we're coming. And she is amped, as mm -hmm. the young folks will say, to hurry up and vote because she believes that once she casts her vote, she'll be able to um, uh, uh, change our circumstance. Yes. We won't yes. have to be living with the way we're living with <laughs> what we're living with uh, currently. But mother, I want to take this opportunity seriously to thank you. Thank you for sharing with us your journey mm -hmm. because it matters yes we, we, we've today on this show we're going to have uh people representing the baby boomers we're going to have people representing the millennials mm -hmm. and we, we're going to have uh people who are we, we have we have the president obama's um he, his he, a piece of his uh, conversation is going to be a part of it and 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 i just wanted to make sure that everyone who is listening understand 
we must vote. Yes, yes. Many in your generation died to give us this right. Yes, yes. And I'm glad to hear you say you felt your vote mattered. Oh, yes. Especially when you voted for the first black yes. African American president yes. in the world, in the, in the country. So I really want to take this opportunity to thank you. Mother, is there anything else you want to share with the people of, of, uh, that are out there? Oh, there was uh, one thing I forgot um, to tell you. Um, there was another way that we had to um, get along with them. They had sections back back in the day. They didn't say black. They mm -hmm. called us colored. Oh, okay. They called us colored people. Mm -hmm. So they had a section for colored people, and they had written say even uh, the uh, restrooms that you would go to up over top the door. There was colored. Mm -hmm. That meant colored people go in that door. Mm -hmm. And then I would have the other door that was white. That was for white people. Mm -hmm. And um, different areas that you go, uh, even in some of the stores, mm -hmm. they had areas just for black people, mm -hmm. colored people. Mm -hmm. And getting on the bus, colored people had to go in the back. Mm -hmm. But Rosa Parks mm -hmm. took care of all of that. Yes. Yes. She did it, she did it, she did it, she did it. But one day, mm -hmm. one day, mm -hmm. she got tired. Mm -hmm. She had been at work all day long. Mm -hmm. Her feet were tired, her whole body was tired. And the work that she was doing was not for us, it was for them. Right. For just a tiny bit of money. And when she got on the bus, she sit down in the first seat she got to, and they try to make a move. And she said, I'm not moving. I'm not moving, I'm tired. I'm gonna stay right here. So God bless Rosa, Rosa Parks mm -hmm. for breaking that tradition mm -hmm. that we must go in the back. Yes. We must go in the back. Yeah. And I cannot, I remember another incident. We were on our way to Atlantic City and it was uh, a night thing. I might as well tell you where we were going. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> to the casino. Okay, okay. <laughs> and we pulled up to the uh, filling station, the gas station, and the man saw us when we pulled up. He put all the lights out. Because mm. he didn't want us to come in. He knew what we were coming in for to use the restroom. But when we pulled up, he put all the lights out. When we got there, he had locked the door so that we couldn't come in. So some of them wanted to break in and blah, blah, blah. I said, no, 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 let's move on. Let's move on. That was, that was a lot of the things that we had to go to. Yeah, and that's why it's important that we vote. They, yes. This generation carried the load. We must vote. Never again, when you hear a candidate says, make America great again, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what the candidate is really saying is, Take America back to when we can throw spitballs uh -huh. on people, mm -hmm. when we can turn off lights, when we can put our bags in the chair mm -hmm. and they better not respond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this is what we want to do. We want to make America healthy. So please make sure you vote. Mother Whitlin, thank you so much oh, thank you for spending for time with me today. And I will have you back again. Well, thank you. It's so been much. a joy. Thank you. We'll be right back. Okay.